What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the weekend. It is finally Friday. I've only been waiting for this for about the last five days. Um, so that being said, I live for the weekend, um, not because I get rest or anything like that, because while well, with four kids and a wife and four cats and a dog, you've got plenty to do on your day off. Um, but that being said, I do look forward to getting away from the job and just sitting back, relax, and spend the time with my kids and my wife. It's it's favorite, favorite, favorite time of the week. Uh, that being said, uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome. I hope you find what I do here interesting or informational or educational. And if not one of those, I hope you find it entertaining. I hope you find something you like in these videos and it's not a waste of your time because if it's a waste of your time and you don't like anything, I'm not really doing a good job at doing my job. So um, again, I hope you like it. If you are a subscriber or a returning viewer, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Um, I couldn't be doing this without you. Well, I could be, but it'd be kind of pointless. Um, so that being said, let's just jump into today's video real quick. I just wanted to go over a couple things. Um, one, I am back in Bash, um, and I know I flip-flop, flip-flop. You see in my videos, I'm on Bash, and I'm on ZSH. I'm on Bash, and I'm on ZSH. Whatever. Um, well, that being said, I switched away from Bash originally because ZSH had all the pretty stuff that grabbed my attention when I was new to Linux, and was like, oh, wow, look at that. That's cool. Then I realized I could do a lot of that stuff in Bash, and so I switched back, but I hadn't spent a whole lot of time in Bash before I switched to ZSH, so I wasn't real comfortable. So I had a few issues in Bash with some word wrap and some stuff like that that was just driving me insane, so I switched back to ZSH have been in ZSH up until about a week ago when I thought, you know what, screw this, I'm tired of using ZSH, not that there's anything wrong with ZSH, so before you blow me up in the comments about about making negative comments on ZSH, that's not what I'm doing. ZSH was great, I loved it, there's a lot to it, um, it is cool, but I mean, Bash is what comes with your Linux system usually, and Bash is amazing on its own, even without all the pretty colors. Um, but let me show you what I've done to actually kind of uh, reconcile the fact that it doesn't have all the pretty colors, but we did give it some. So that being said, let's go ahead and open a terminal. I'm going to launch this terminal here. This is the kitty terminal. Um, you can see up here, this is my uh, moving GIF. Um, you'll see, I'll go kind of go over that for a brief second in my Bash RC. Um, I, had, I do have a video on this, um, and this is my version of the... Um, NeoFetch. So, that being said, let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's zoom in. And then I'm going to type bconf, which is just my alias to reach my bash rc file. And we're going to open up bash rc. Oh, that's quite close. Let's zoom out a little bit. Now, I want to ask one question here. I have changed color schemes again because I keep being told that people are having problems seeing my. Uh, seeing the text on my screen because of my color schemes. Now, I've switched again. I really like this one. This is the one I'm going to use on my machine uh, for the foreseeable future. Doesn't mean it's going to be the one I use on videos if you guys tell me that you can't see it. But here's the deal. I want you to please take a look at this and then leave in the comments below whether you can see my writing and my text. Okay, if you can't see it, then that's fine. I'll use a different um, uh, color scheme for my videos, uh, but this is going to be my system color scheme for now. Um, so that being said, again, please tell me if you can see this. If you can't see this or you can't make out the writing or it's hard to differentiate or whatever, then um, please let me know so I won't use it. But for today, we are just going to switch color schemes. And we're going to use Groovebox because I know everybody can see that one. And so I'm just going to go over a few things now. Now this here, this is the uh, logo you see when I launch my uh, terminal. Um, this is a script I wrote. It's in my .local slash scripts directory, which is on my GitHub and GitLab page. So if you uh, if you want to check that out, go ahead and go over there. You can grab it, use it if you want, whatever. Um, but basically what it does, this is a case statement now that runs and it checks for what terminal I'm launching. If I launch Kitty, then it runs and runs this uh, logo right here. Um, it'll pull that logo and put it in and then run my homemade NeoFetch and put that in as well. Um, if it launches ST, then it'll just give me PFetch, and if it launches Alacrity, the NeoFetch. But that's not here. what I'm here to talk about. Uh, this right here, um, if we actually go and open another terminal here, let's go ahead and clear the screen and zoom in, and we're going to cd into .local slash scripts. Now this is one of my repositories and you can see right here in a nice blue or uh, cyan or whatever color you want to call that, teal and red, 
we have some nice colors that help kind of decorate up the terminal, but we also have some good information here. We have the repository branch, and then we have um, the git status right here. Now, if we go back into our bash RC, you can see what we've got is we've got a function that says parse git dirty. So that's going to tell me if my git repository is dirty or if it's clean or if something needs to be done. And what it does is it just runs the git status and it checks to see if the status is renamed, if the branch is ahead, if there's a new file, if there's untracked files, modified or deleted, yada, yada, yada. And then it'll print out in those brackets, it prints out um, one of these... Um, images here, or not images, but uh, characters here, um, greater than or less than, I can never remember which one that is greater than, I believe. Um, the exclamation point, if the branch is ahead, we get the plus, if there's a new file, we get the question mark, if there's untracked files, uh, we get the star, if there's a modified file, which if we look right here, you can see we've got some modified files in there, we need to be pushed, um, and then if we get a minus sign if there's deleted. So again, that is just this box right here to show me what my repository status is. Then we have right here, we have parse git branch. So basically what this is gonna do is just check what branch um, the repository is. And it shows its main branch. So my uh, .local scripts directory is my main branch repository and it is got some uh, modified files in it right now. So that's one thing I wanted to show you. This is just this nice easy function here that will run through and take care of that for me so I can have that information right on my prompt. Um, then basically what you got to do is you take these two functions and this is my prompt right here um, which if we go back over here and look at it we can see it's just a real basic um, prompt it just gives me what uh, directory I'm in and then nice little arrow here I don't I, I have had big fancy prompts and I've had dual prompts on both sides and all kinds of stuff and it's fun to change you know it's just one of those things that you can do in Linux and in your terminal that makes using your system a little more interesting you can play around with stuff but for right now this is uh, this is what I'm with and that's what I like um, but basically what that is is that's just here this is gonna print the directory that I'm in um, and then it runs or excuse me the this is gonna do the um, git branch and then it's gonna do whether it's uh, clean or dirty or whatever and then <clears throat> excuse me this n here is new line which means let's go to the end of this line here um, <clears throat> new line which means if we go over here it's gonna run the two functions right here and then it's gonna drop me down a line to the new line here once we do that it's gonna check uh, the directory I'm in and then it's gonna print the arrows and the other arrows and these are just the color codes and that's it that's it for my prompt um, so basically it gives me these two the get parse dirty and the the uh, or the excuse me the uh, branch and then the get parse dirty and then down here it drops down and gives me the directory I'm in and then my arrows. So that was one of the things I just wanted to show you, the uh, git status I have available on my uh, prompt and just adding a little color to my terminal. And then the other thing I wanted to go over was, again with the color in, um, in uh, ZSH was one of the big things that kept me over there. But since we don't have that anymore um, on Bash, you don't have the different plugins and stuff and the options for that like you do in ZSH. But what you can do is I had colored man pages in ZSH and it was just a lot easier for me to read, a lot nicer. And what you can do is using the term cap command, uh, you can actually add some color to your man pages. So if you export less, because the man pages uh, show up using less, so you export these less underscore term cap underscore and then you give it one of these um, variables here or one of these uh, options here and then you give it a color over here so let's go and open up a man page let's just do man term cap and then you can see we've got some nice color on the descriptions we get anything that's underlined we have in a different color uh, most text is still white but your head your uh, headlines are different colored and so it just makes it a little easier to read and then if you scroll down in this man page you can see all these here right on the edge these are what you put in here for your different options. So if we scroll down, uh, string capabilities, we just keep going down, it'll tell you all the different things like, so if you look up the uh, uh, SO, underscore SO is going to be, we scroll down here and we find SO start standout mode. So basically you just go through and you find the ones you want to change colors on in here and you add them to the to the line here and you choose your color you want and then you have some nice colored man pages um, again it's not anything that's detrimental to your system not anything that's going to make you more efficient not anything that's going to just 
I don't know, help in any way, but it's just nice to have, for me, a little color in there as opposed to just having the white. And so that's what I'm saying. Switching from ZSH back to Bash um, and back and forth between the two, you know, the, the color in ZSH and all the different options was cool, but the more I'm actually learning Bash instead of just jumping out of it is... I'm just learning I like it more and more, and, I, and I'm hoping to stay in it longer this time. I hope I don't get frustrated like I did last time. Like I said, I solved my word wrap issue, um, and I solved a couple other issues with some color and some other things, and it's just, right now, it's, it's working amazing. So, that being said, I am back on Bash. I love it, and the uh, fact that I am learning more and more how to do the stuff I was doing in ZSH in bash without all the plugins and just changing my bash rc and my dot input rc and my uh dot bash profile and just being able to do all that has been pretty cool so i uh, hope you like the video if uh if you want to find any of these um they should be all over on my uh, GitHub and my GitLab accounts. Um, those are linked in the description of the video. You'll also find my email linked in the description, my website, and I am now on Odyssey. So there will be a link to my Odyssey channel as well. If you like uh, Odyssey over YouTube and you feel like supporting me over there, please do me a favor and jump on over and check it out. That being said, I hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend. God bless.